Hi, Steve here again. The first question many people ask when confronted with the evidence that no planes were used on 9-11 is usually something along the lines of, okay, if planes didn't do it, then what did? Well, that's a good question, so let's start with Shanksville, Pennsylvania and Flight 93. It's September 11th. It's going to be a hot day today. The ground is hard and dry as it usually is at this time of year. And although my lawn has had the benefit of a little water every now and then this summer, the dry field over in Shanksville, where Flight 93 allegedly crashed, wasn't so lucky, making that part of our tale even more surreal. The official story has it the passengers revolted and took control of the plane, driving it down where it burrowed into the ground of an abandoned strip mine. Yes, they insist the 757 disappeared into the ground, which should insult the intelligence of any thinking person, but since good propaganda targets emotion, not reason, thinking has little to do with it. Compared to other jet crash sites, though, Shanksville looks nothing like one. So without evidence, do the authorities arrive at a more realistic explanation for the crater? Not exactly. Well, if it doesn't look like a jet crash, what does it look like? Here, NASA gives us a clue with photos of oblique meteorite impacts on the moon. According to this chart, the elongated craters are caused by meteorites striking at trajectories of less than 10 degrees from horizontal. By mirroring the images, we can see what a crater might look like if two meteorites had struck at 10 degree trajectories from opposite directions. Looks familiar, doesn't it? But we're not on the moon, at least some of us anyway, so what other projectile could cause such a gash back here on Earth? So you were, okay. okay, so I'm coming up here, almost to the stop sign, and this, I keep calling it a plane for lack of any other, it, it came down, I mean, it was like right, right above my van, and it right down over my windshield, because it was so low that I ducked in my van. And when I did, I sh shut off my radio. And that's when I knew there was no sound. And I said it out loud, I said it two times. Oh my God, it's gonna crash, it's gonna crash. It cleared those trees, so it, to my knowledge, it just seems to me it had to be below the power lines. Came in, swooped up, cleared those trees. It was fall, so it was full of leaves. There, no leaves moved on the trees. Nothing fell, because I kept thinking, you know, there should be like a disturbance and it just smoothly went around. I went right over there, banked to the right and crashed. Did you see anything like this? No. Okay, this is, uh, that's the Falcon F-20. What that is, is that's the plane that they say in the official story was circling the area afterwards taking uh, photos. And you said afterwards you did see, what, two planes? Mm -hmm. And they were... They were real high, and they okay. were just like silver triangles, in this, white triangles. Okay, so they, they were real shiny. They didn't look like this, though. No. See, um... I mean, they were real high, but they just looked yeah. like those... I would call it a fighter jet, because that's yeah. what it looked like. Um, yeah, with the wings back. And yeah, it was just, like a, it triangle, was just yeah. a triangle in the sky, and it was really high. Okay, I wanted to clarify that, because there's an artic uh, article about you in uh, American Free Press, and they said you identified the plane as being, this, this here's an A-10 Thunderbolt, it's called a Warthog. And they actually said that you called the white plane, which you saw what we were talking about back there that went over to, that this was what flew over your van, according to you. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. I no, just no. wanted to clarify that. Oh, look how that. small that area That's, is. I see. And there's no way. This thing's got like a 60-foot wingspan. No. It's... It was no wider than my van. And, I mean, I've, I have told that. And, I mean, my husband and I went up. We measured it. We sent measurements to people. You know, mm -hmm. no, it was not anything like that. Because, look, I mean, that's not, that's, that's, 
you know, you can see in the picture, like the rivets and everything, there was nothing. This was nothing. pure molded white so fiberglass. Definitely you know? wasn't a Thunderbolt. Nope, nothing like that. And definitely wasn't a F-20 Falcon. Nope. The AGM-158 Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile, or JSAM. At 14 feet long, with a wingspan of about 8 feet, the JSAM fits the description of a terrain-hugging small white plane to a T. If I had never seen one before and witnessed one fly over my van, I would probably think it was a small white plane too. JSAMs are air-launched, which explains the two fighter jets Susan described seeing at a high altitude. The JSAM is extremely accurate and can be configured with a 900-pound, dense metal penetrating warhead, which measures 12 by 60 inches. This warhead is designed for punching through hardened targets, such as concrete bunkers. Therefore, the hard, dry, rocky soil of Shanksville would be child's play explaining how the wing gash was made, with the warhead detonation accounting for the crater in the center. Even the Shanksville explosion plume indicates an ordnance blast, not a jet crash. The use of cruise missiles fits the damage evidence as well as the eyewitness testimony and provides a much better explanation for the Shanksville crater than does a 757. If I can come up with this much circumstantial evidence after browsing the web for a few hours, imagine what the FBI could do. And what could motivate these people to hold memorials? No jet made that gash in the ground and missiles don't carry passengers, so why the ceremony? Because propaganda works, that's why, and it's important to keep the wound fresh so the outrage doesn't fade, else the support for the wars might fade too. What began with Bush is now being continued by Obama, who four years ago promised to end the wars and stop the torture, something I'm sure a lot of you would like to forget. Leaders from any political party who shed crocodile tears for the fictional dead deserve ridicule, not respect. Voting has accomplished nothing, as the last 12 years should make abundantly evident. Nothing will change unless we change it. If you sincerely hope for change, you'll find a way to make it happen. But speaking the truth is a good place to start. And that is, anyone who claims a 757 can disappear into the ground is either lying or a fool but it's up to you to stop believing them. So on this September 11th, try something different. Try the truth. Thank you.